everybody. Good afternoon. It's Brett here. Um, going into the second video on TrendSpider today. For this video, I want to just go over a little bit more in depth about the automated technical analysis features of this, some of the different multi-factor alerts that you can do, some of the indicator alerts, things like that. So if you look at my screen here, uh, we have the chart pulled up for Tesla. And so what I wanted to cover first is the automated trend line. So if you remember from the last video, if you select the automated trend lines, TrendSpider will pull through their algorithm some of the most re uh, relevant trend lines that it can find. And now there's a number of different ways that you can customize this depending on what you're looking for. So anytime you see these three dots on any of the tabs up here, that's where you can customize things. So for my trends right now, I'm looking at standard. There's three different options, original, enhanced, and standard. Enhanced is gonna show you quite a few more lines. Standard, or excuse me, original, to what they initially had. It's gonna show you a few less lines, but maybe a little bit more relevant. I prefer to use the standard, which is kind of halfway in between. You can also select trend lines depending on your preference, either from the Wix high to low or from the body, open to close. So if we're looking at Tesla and we want to find trend lines from the body, open to close, looks like it's not going to show us any. Maybe there's any that's picking up. But my preference, I like to just do my trend lines from the Wix high to low, protecting the island gaps under the standard. And so this is the trend lines that it's pulling up. Now, the other thing that you can do, just drop down here under the trends, we can look at the most relevant lines, which is what I select, the more lines feature, or if you want, you can look at every single line that the system pulls up. So let's just select that real quick. These are all the different trend lines that uh, TrendSpider is picking up on Tesla. And obviously, in, instead of trying to go through all of that, you know, you can select more lines, which is gonna be quite a bit, um, but you can kind of get an idea of what they're looking at. Uh, of course, I like to just stick with some of the most relevant. And the way I like to do this is I like to chart my uh, ticker, which of them I'm looking at, and then hit the trends button just as a comparison to see if maybe there's something that I had missed. Or if, maybe if I want to drop to the weekly chart, you know, maybe there's a different trend there that I'm missing. And if you even want to get a bit more in depth, you can get click on advanced. I'm not going to go into this because frankly, I don't understand it completely, but you have different base points that you can look at, different ATR factors, different groups of lines. If you want to look at trends, you know, it talks about what the different colors of the trend line, trend line means. So that's one of the really nice features, just having some of those automated trend lines, just as a kind of a comparison to what you're seeing on the chart, maybe to see if it matches up. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to cover is the automated Fibonacci. If you're a Fib user, when you select auto Fib, it automatically will plot the most relevant fib to what the system sees. Of course, you can always right click on the fib. You can look at uh, selecting different fib levels depending on what you're looking for. If I wanted to reverse the fib, I can hit reverse and it'll plot it the uh, opposite direction. Uh, it's nice features. I, I used that initially. Now I just kind of draw my own fibs depending on what I'm looking for. I wanted to dive a little bit more into the multi time frame piece here. We talked about it in the other video. I'm a big fan of using the 65 minute chart. And again, with this multi time frame, and this is a great thing to use too for day trading, is I have the 65 minute chart up here. And right now I'm gonna do a comparison with the daily chart. And it's gonna seem a little bit overwhelming, but you can see anytime you see the dotted lines, that's the daily chart, right? That's our comparison chart. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off uh, the 65 minute EMAs, and I'm gonna just go ahead and plot the daily ones to see what we get. And, I like to use the moving average cloud, just keeps things a little bit cleaner for me. I, I like, I really like clean charts. As I'm looking at the 65 minute chart right now, these dotted lines represent the daily chart, right? So I have an idea of what I'm looking at. So if I see a setup I like, oh, you know, we have a, a hammer candle develop here on the 65 minute, you know, where is it in relation to the EMAs on the daily chart, right? Well, we dropped below the 80 EMA, but we closed above. If you're day trading, let's say you're using the five minute chart, you might use the 15 minute chart as your, you know, quote unquote anchor chart, if you will. So right now I'm looking at the five minute time frame, five minute candles, uh, but I'm looking at the 15 minute EMAs right now for, you know, different support resistance levels. So and the same thing, you can, if you're an RSI user, you know, I can select RSI, but I also want to note on the five minute, the black line here, the solid line is my five minute RSI, and then the dotted line behind it, that's going to be the RSI in the 15 minute. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. It's a great feature. It saves you from having a quick back and forth um, or even, you know, having, you know, four different charts open like this and selecting, you know, 5, 15, 65 daily chart, right? Things get a little small. So, uh, and then lastly, the last part of this video I wanted to go into a little bit was some of their alerts that they have. So I'm going to jump back and these alerts work on any time frame that you're looking for. 
I like to use them primarily on the uh, daily chart. And so let's say for Tesla, you know, if I'm looking for a pullback and I want to see it back at a support level, you know, we saw Tesla bounced here. I think it's overextending, you know what, maybe I want to buy at 607. You know, I can right click on any trend line or any horizontal line as long as it connects to previous candles. And I can select create alert at this line. Now there's a few different options that they talk about. The breakthrough, where you can have the open on one side of the trend line and the close on the other side, the touch, uh, when price basically just kind of trades in or through the buffer or a bounce. My preference is just to select all three. I don't care what it does. I just want to know when price comes into that area. You know, that way I don't have to set a, a limit order and just have capital tied up. You can select your sensitivity level here. Uh, obviously, the more sensitive you're going to get a broader area all the way down to simply just right on this trend line itself. I like to give it a little bit of a buffer area you know, something like that. So, you know, price trades down in here. I'm going to know about it. And right now, this alert is currently set up to notify me of a candle close on the daily chart. Uh, I want to know before that. So I'm going to go ahead and select 10 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and just label this, you know, Tesla retracement. And I can pick how, how long do I want to wait before this alert expires? 12 hours all the way up to 30 days. Well, I'm going to say 30 days. How often do I want to be notified? I'll say trigger twice. If I'm doing something, you know, I'll have it trigger again. Now I'm going to create this alert. And here's my label for it. Here's my alert levels. And so when price trades down, or if it ever trades down to this level, and the candle closes within this buffer area, on the 10 minute chart, I'm gonna get a notification. And that notification is gonna come right up here. See, I've got a number of different alerts here that have uh, either triggered or expired. Uh, you'll also get a text message as well if you do decide to opt into that. Other things that you can do with these multi-factor alerts, I know we're all a big fan of the Momo strategy. And so I wanna know, well, you know, when is Tesla gonna have that 65 minute, you know, 821 EMA cross or 78 minute, depending on what you use. 65 is available on TrendSpider. I can click on this create alert button. I want a multi-factor alert. And we talked a little bit about script building. We'll go into that in a subsequent video, but I can just load my script from a template here. And I already have a pre-built 65 minute entry strategy. And so I'm gonna select that and name it uh, Tesla Momo. Uh, I'll give it seven days to trigger and I will create that alert. And so now, Anytime Tesla has this 821 EMA cross, uh, cross up, I should say, I will be notified. So if we were to go in the past a little bit, um, I would have been notified on the candle close of this that, hey, we got the 821 EMA cross. I can go in there and you know make my decision on uh, taking the trade or not. If you're in the trade already and you want to know when you get that cross down, same thing, right? Go multi-factor alert, script. I'm going to load it from my template. There's my 65 minute exit, eight, cross down the 21 EMA. I'm gonna create that alert, and now I'll be notified when Tesla has that 821 cross down. Nice part is you don't have to recreate those all the time. When the alert expires, you can actually clone it and just put that alert right back on. So if you are trading your 15 stocks, um, you don't have to rebuild that every single time. It's a great system. Uh, they do a great job notifying. There's a lot of different things you can use. You know, if you want to, let's go with, I'm gonna pull up a couple of trend lines here. So I have my, well, buy off the purple line, if you will my 100 EMA, you can select select alerts for different EMAs as well. And so I can right click right here, same thing, create an alert at this line, same thing, breakthrough, touch, bounce, you know, select my sensitivity within that 100 EMA or whichever EMA I choose, my time frame, create the alert, and then when price comes down to whichever EMA I choose or multiple EMAs, um, again, I will get notified of that. So I'm a big believer of uh, buying off the 21 here. So I have a number of different alerts set already for when some of my preferred stocks uh, trade into the buffer area for the 21 EMA, I can get notified on that. I know this video probably went a little bit longer, um, but these alerts are really important. Uh, they really do help streamline things in your trading. And if you have any questions, please do reach out to me in Slack. Otherwise, I will be having a few other videos coming out here uh, in the near future. And again, appreciate you listening and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.